What are the biggest victories in a game without the smallest ones which precede them? You know what? I'm sick and tired of everybody celebrating all the headliners. The big bosses, the big heroes, the best twists in the game. Fuck all that nonsense. Let's, let's have some celebration for the ground swell, okay? Those evil enemy forces, they're nothing without the enemy forces. Just a, just a leader, just a general of the army, can't do shit. He just sits in a room in a chair with a big fucking map saying, go over there and kill everybody. So, I want to make myself and you guys a top 15 enemies in gaming, parentheses, that are not bosses. There may or may not be parentheses. I think I did the wrong side there. You'd think a treasure chest trying to murder you would be an appropriately frightening thing in video games. However, since just about every RPG these days, and in old days in fact, has a mimic of some sort, it's really kinda common. In come the Boxer Bros from Chrono Cross. Unlike most mimics, these cheeky chests aren't without their sense of fairness. You only have one chance, but if you attack the right boxer, you get stuff. Glorious stuff. Choose the wrong one though, and you get insulted. And then you have to fight them? Oh, but then you get the stuff. Also, they're called boxers. If you don't get the pun, I'm gonna downvote your face. The Mario universe has a ton of enemies with some pretty weird designs, but their best ones are always the simplest. Case in point, Shy Guys. Shy Guys are fucking adorable. Their best venues definitely gotta be Yoshi's Island, where there's like a good six or so different kinds of variants for you to eat. I'd love to tell you more about them, but the one I interviewed really didn't have much to say. So Shy Guy, uh, there have been some recent accusations that you are in fact quite shy. How do you respond? Uh-huh. Okay. Do you hear that? That's the sound of lost souls persevering. The gas fellas lost their way after the calamity, but they never forgot how to wield that mighty pickaxe. As the kid ventured out from the bastion all the way through to the wilds, the gas fellas weren't so happy to see him. One or two, the kid can handle no problem. But when those mighty tools are thrust downward like weaponized drums with a deadly rhythm, he'd pay them the attention that they have earned. Welcome to Monday Night Combat, the only futuristic blood sport that's got more money than it does murder. Oh, whoa, here come the bouncers ready to tear you a new one. Hold on to your old one, folks, this one's gonna get rough. It would appear today is Bouncerbot Day here in the arena. You may wonder where these galloping brutes originated from. Fun fact, instead of forcing gorillas into brutal and endless slaughter for our amusement, we created a robot to offer the same level of madness while still cutting down on lawsuits and the throwing of fecal matter. And there he goes. Bounced right into the next life. We'll see you next time, buddy. The Wizrobes in Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker are definitely some of the more interesting Zelda enemies both in gameplay and in design, and there's been a lot of fucking Zelda enemies. Design-wise, they're like Fruit Loops Toucan Magicians, which is absolutely glorious. Thematically, they fit the whole birds and wind thing as well, which is definitely their most inspired version. Gameplay-wise, I find them to be rather challenging enemies, as summoners often are, which combined with their design makes them pretty memorable. When it comes to weapons, I like drills a lot, and I'll talk a little bit more about that at a later date. But for now, let's just consider that they're both functional and deadly, and sometimes they're massively oversized and attached to vehicles. Such is the case with the Drillerellas and Mercenary Kings. I love the character's design as a whole, they kind of remind me of Drill Dozer in fact, but they also make for a pretty decent challenge. The drill reflects bullets, so you have to short hop and shoot them in the head before they can integrate your intestines with the nearest wall. <laughs> Cycles are amazing! They're so freaking crazy! Their quotes, their 
fucked up masks. Oh, they're so fucking over the top. Some of them, <laughs> this shit is crazy. Some of them even light themselves on fucking fire. Hot damn. Those guys are so awesome. <laughs> Stalkers are some scary shit. There really aren't too many scary enemies on this list because I don't play scary games. I don't want to be scared, okay? The life is scary enough with the bills and driving on the freeway and public restrooms. But these ninjas are absolutely terrifying. Mark of the Ninja gives you the power of hyper perception and the skill of supreme stealth, but these ninjas, <laughs> they don't give a fuck what you can do. They don't even have to see you to find you, they actually crawl around where you hide, and once they locate you, they can laser beam you in half. Imagine if mall cops could do that. We'd have severed punks lying around all over the place. The Enderman, seen here in his natural habitat, is normally a rather docile creature. Content simply to wander the terrain, one might even call them adorable. Seen here, they often pick up blocks of terrain and carry it with them wherever they go. However, due to their severe skin condition, seen here, they react very poorly if they notice you looking at them. Uh, hmm, it appears, in fact, I've been spotted. Oh gosh, oh, oh gosh, the teleporting. Get the water, get the water. Elites are incredibly smart enemies that have become as central to Halo's success as Master Chief is. In Halo Combat Evolved, as well as in subsequent Halo games, Elites represented a force that could stop the player with skill and throw their power around intelligently. Elites have shields, they throw grenades, and you'd have to learn their behaviors, just like they figured out yours. If your shield was down, 9 times out of 10, they'd just bum rush you and punch you in the face. That level of AI was impressive a decade ago, and it still is today. But to be perfectly honest with you, the real reason that they're on this list is because of this. <laughs> it's like an alien haiku. Amazing. Hey, dude! I love Prinnies. I really fucking love Prinnies, guys. They're penguins. They're patched together with evil and string. And they stab fools with knives that they keep tucked away in a little fanny pack. You can even throw them and they explode on impact. Of all the crazy shit that exists in the Disgaea franchise, of which there is a lot, Prinnies are the most simplistically bonkers. They have their own game, they have their own shirts, they have their own... Just go to the next one, dude! So, more drills. I'm like a dentist over here. Okay, so to explain, because Big Daddies roam the halls of Rapture, they're totally not bosses. Which means they're normal baddies that are fucking awesome. Big Daddies are formidable, they're intimidating, and the game trains you to be legitimately afraid of them. And it works. So much so that your power over the course of the game is basically measured by your ability to successfully take out these crazy, fucking, scary dudes. They're real they're just really scary. Extreme fear. Hello everyone. This pick subject is a Chozo ghost from Metroid Prime. However, due to their very scientific nature, I just decided I'd bring Samus Aaron in to explain what the fuck they are, because I don't really get it. So take it away, Samus. The Chozo ghosts are aberrations shifting in and out of existence uncontrollably due to extensive exposure to Phazon on the planet Talon 4. While they appear to be ghosts, they're actually- Oh, whoa, 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 you're not making it any simpler. Let's try that again with less science. They're ancient fucked up bird monsters from space. They like other Chozo stuff. There. Alright, look, I mean, if you're just not even gonna try, then what is- what are you doing there? Oh my god! Can I go now? Spelunky is a hard game. Every time you discover something new on your path to treasures, it's usually another thing that kills you. Traps kill you, monkeys kill you, you can survive being eaten by a giant worm, but then its stomach acid kills you. But my favorite thing that kills you? Yetis. They're some of the most adorable little simpletons I've encountered in a game. They're like, oh yes, 
What a nice day it is! A million miles below the surface of the Earth's crust, in a somehow frozen cavern would get the fuck out! Where I can simply enjoy a stroll uninhibited. What a great day. Hmm. Look, I'm great at geometry. Fucking pi r squared, am I right? But fuck the green squares in geometry wars. Man, these things are so impossible to hit. I can fight off an entire screen of every shape known to mankind trying to hunt down one little green piece of square shit. They evade all of your attacks unless you either hit them dead on or if you make it impossible for them to escape. And that's what I do. I slowly, gradually, corral those fuckers into the nearest wall and then murder them all at once. <laughs> Well, all right, guys, that's my top 15 non-boss enemies in gaming. Now, there are a shit ton of bad guys out there in the, the bad guy wilderness, and I couldn't fit them all on here. I made I made, made it 15, so I could put five more in. But uh, inevitably, I missed some, so let me know some that you thought in the comments below. While you guys do that, I'm just gonna read you some of my honorable mentions that it didn't make it into, into the list, okay? So I got the cops from every game ever, those witches, the little bubble ladies in Don't My Cry, the blue and red claw monster guys from Bayonetta, the raccoon monsters in Battlelock Theater, they're, de they're delightful but very mean, the vault droppers in Iron Brigade, Templars in Assassin's Creed, those are, I hate, fuck those guys, Balverines from Fable, unicorns from Overlord because fucking badass unicorns, I mean how often does that happen? The double flail guys in Rogue Legacy, I love these guys because it's like a little consent, double concentric circle thing. The Hammer Bros from Mario because let's just consider that shy guys are like a Yoshi thing. They're not. Cockatrices from Final Fantasy and Ogre Battle 64. Fuck to getting turned to stone. The Kamikaze guys from Serious Sam that they go, they go, uh, There's like a lot more that I probably deleted already and I forgot. 